Hi, my name's Steffi and I play video games and then interview the game developers of those video games. On this episode, I speak with the game devs from Haunting Humans Studio, the creators of Who Are You? Who Are You is a sci-fi psychological horror. This game will keep you guessing on what is real versus what is your imagination. In this game, you are forced to fight through your emotions and memories to discover what is real about the disappearance of your wife 20 years ago and the connection with the kidnapper of your daughter with the alien mask. On this episode, we speak with Diego, the game designer, and Paz, the game psychologist advisor. We discuss some of the challenges they experience creating their very first indie game. We discuss where their inspiration comes from, including their favorite horror films, as well as their favorite video games. Diego and Paz talk about all the psychological research behind the game, the storyline, and the characters. We discuss the deeper questions the game pushes you to contemplate such as what is real, what is your imagination, who is good, who is evil, are you good, are you evil, should you save humanity or should you save your daughter. You can find links to all Haunting Human Studios social media in the bio below. I have also added the link to my gameplay of the demo in the bio. And don't forget to beam me up, crew. Support this channel by hitting the subscribe button and the thumbs up. Thank you, Paz, and thank you, Diego, for joining me today. I'm extremely excited to be chatting to you about your new demo, Who Are You? Best way to kick things off is, can you both please introduce yourselves and please tell me your involvement in the game, Who Are You? Sure. Uh, let me start. Um, Diego, I'm the game designer and producer. I'm a bit of a journalist. I do a bit of the animation and I help with the development of the game and writing the story. So a little bit of everything. No, it's perfect. Thank you, Diego. And first, tell, tell us about yourself and what's your involvement in the game. Well, my name is Paz and I'm the psychologist advisor of the team. And my role on the team is to bring the psychology to every aspect of the game. So Diego, do you have any formal game development experience? So you did mention that you're a bit of a generalist. Uh, what does that exactly mean? And I guess what formal training do you have to know how to design and create a game? Well, not uh, a specific um, experience on developing. I am self-taught, so I learn everything by myself. Most of the things that I learned and everything uh, with regards of Unreal, that's uh, the platform that we are using to develop the game, um, is just uh, my passion for learning everything. The only um, experience or uh, information that, that I have is because I'm a business analyst, so I know all the stuff from the size of the production, right? So production side, and I studied um, to, to become a, a film writer, a film director, sorry. So I... Everything that involves movies and scripts, uh, all of those uh, things are part of my knowledge, right? So everything else, uh, like the animation or the development itself, it's everything is, are things that I'm learning and I, I started learning because of this passion for creating the, the actual game and, and creating this story and giving life to this story. That's really cool. I guess I'm curious to understand what is the most difficult thing you have found about this process? Uh, well, first of all, time. <laughs> Having time to learn everything. <laughs> I think that's uh, the, main, uh, the main thing that, that most of us as indie devs, uh, that we start learning by ourselves and... Uh, having jobs uh, also besides uh, our passion. Uh, I think time is finding the time to do everything or even to sleep sometimes. Uh, those are, are the main the main things because then it's all, ab all about learning, right? So it may be difficult at first, but as time goes by, you start learning and things get easier. But time, as I said before, time is time. So we can't control that. So I think that's the most difficult part. I think that becomes a deeper conversation with life. <laughs> that's the most limited resources resource we have as a human. So I completely get that. And just on that, I'm curious to understand what did you anticipate being the most difficult thing 
that was actually easier than you thought? Maybe starting with the development. I thought that um, not n knowing about the, the actual systems that we are using or how we could tackle those uh, different situations without having the knowledge at first, it's like facing this big giant because you don't know where to start, which is uh, the head, which is uh, which are the feet, and you're like, where where do we start? But once you start, everything flows. Uh, once you have the courage to to pass those uh, walls that sometimes one mm, you tend to put because you don't have the knowledge or you think this is going to be too hard, uh, I don't want to try. No, it's it's about that, right? Once you start. Uh, with the development, especially with Unreal, because of how it works, um, it gets easier among time. It, it sounds as though, um, yeah, you really jumped into the process with a good attitude and it's, it's really nice to hear that things are getting easier rather than harder, which is, which is really nice. As what about yourself? I'm, I'm curious to understand what's been the most difficult thing about the entire process and what you thought would be difficult but has been easier than you thought? Mm, in my case, I will say mm, start from zero. You know, uh, I don't have any experience on, on this, so I had to learn all in the flow. So that is something that I will say that was the most difficult thing. Is this both the first game you have created? Yeah, this is the, the first game that we went the, the whole we did the, the whole process. Uh, there's another game that's like um, on our back backlog that's like our the main game that the main idea that we had, but we didn't went with that one first, right? So this will be the, the first one and the first one that gets into Steam as a demo and all of that. I'm assuming that you both play video games, that you've played video games for a very long time and you like playing video games. Is that correct? <laughs> Completely, all the time. <laughs> nice. Okay, well, I, I'm also curious to understand uh, a little bit about when you first started playing video games uh, and what that first video game was. I, I always speak with um, gamers and they always remember the first video game they played and they always remember that first moment. So whether they were playing with friends or whether they were playing with an older sibling or whether they just started playing themselves. So can you tell us um, how, you be how you started playing video games? In my case, I start playing video games when I have four years old with my brother. And the first game that I remember I, I played was um, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 for Sega Genesis. Uh, and it's one of my favor favorite games at the time. That's so cool. And do you play now? Do you still play that game now? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> and I'm curious, are you currently playing a video game now? What, what game are you playing at the moment? Mm, I will say Portal. Portal 1. Portal? Yeah. Nice. I haven't played that game yet. A lot of people love that game. They say it's a really fun game. It's like a puzzle game, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That uh, there's a lot of good reviews, yeah. <laughs> what about yourself, Diego? Uh, well, I more or less the same, like around the same age, uh, four or five years old, I started playing because uh, some of my friends uh, had a Nintendo. So I went to their houses and started, of course, I started playing Mario and another game that's called Mappy, that's about a, a cat that needs to, to chase, a, sorry, <laughs> backwards. It's about a mouse that needs to go uh, to escape from uh, different cats. Uh, but the, the main one was, was Mario all, all the way. Nice. Classic, absolute classic. I love that. And uh, are you still playing those games today? Yeah, I tend to play Mario because I have a son and I'm teaching my son to play games. And he has to know that he has to play Mario. What are you playing at the moment? Uh, I assume you might, maybe you don't have any time to play a game at the moment, but are you playing a game at the moment outside of the games that you're playing with your son? Is there something that you, you're obsessed with at the moment? Uh, yeah, I tend to play different games because I don't want to, to stay away from that side of me. So uh, I, I play different games. I don't know, I can play either Fortnite 
or No Man's Sky. That's another game. That's another great game. Oh, and I'm waiting to play for uh, Alan Wake 2 and, and Baldur's Gate 3. So. <laughs> Baldur's Gate 3 recently won the game, uh, of, the game of the Year, I think. I think that's all over my newsfeed and the internet. So are you enjoying it? Do you think it's worth the hype? Yeah, I think so. I, I, thought, I think that Alan Wake 2 deserved <laughs> that recognition. But yeah, all, all of the games are great. All of the games from this year were great games. So Personally, I love playing video games, but I find them equally frustrating as I do find them fun. But that's because, admittedly, I am still a novice gamer, so I continuously die and I'm still navigating the basics. I'm curious to understand your relationship with video games overall. And is there one thing you guys could point out about what you love about video games in general and also what you hate about video games? Uh, well, in, in my case, um, I think it's, it's about everything, right? It's about the involvement, about uh, having that time for yourself where... You are either a mage, you are fighting uh, an army, you are doing, you are experiencing different stories, right? Um, but the, the whole uh, meaning behind gaming, I mean, in, at least in my case, it was um, part of maybe you're struggling or you have some, a lot of stress in, in your normal life. So just having that time to see and uh, transport to a different world, to, to another universe, to different environments. I, I tend to play a lot of different g games, even role-playing games, so it, it's a lot of things like that. I think that's uh, the best thing for one side. And on the other side, uh, there's just small percentage uh, of bad stuff that uh, sometimes depends on the community, right? So I guess when there's a toxic community, when there's a toxic community, I mean, gaming is great, but a toxic community can make a game really bad. And I think that's, uh, that's what I can say I, I hate. Because, but it's not gaming, but it's that bad side when the community goes wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's a, also in life as well. Like, life is great, but sometimes you come across some nasty people. But I completely agree with you. I think um, one of the best things about gaming is being lost in the stories escapism being able to relax and unwind just playing a good game and um spending hours playing playing a good game but i completely appreciate i think um there is a toxic side to some game communities we won't mention them because <laughs> that's probably will get will get us into a bit more trouble but i completely appreciate that but with that said um i think throughout my gaming journey i've met really cool people such as yourselves and I think you guys are the true representation of people who play video games and the gaming community so you guys should be really proud of yourself because yeah I think video game people are awesome and you guys are a reflection of that which is cool <laughs> so Paz can you um can you tell me something that you love about video games and something you hate about video games yeah, well, something I love about the games is the fact that you can travel around around the world uh, gaming or meet new people while while you you are playing and something that I hate will say the same as Diego, the toxicity in some communities. Yeah. I completely appreciate that. I think I don't think there's anything else that needs to be said about that. <laughs> I think we just really understand where it's coming from. I was just trying to think, like, I don't understand where the the toxic behavior comes from. It's, yeah, it's weird. I don't know. It, yeah, anyway, it, it must be the competitiveness of certain games or... Yeah, uh, it's, like, it's like internet, right? Anything in internet can be good or bad. Life is good and bad, as you said, so... Yeah. Anyway... <laughs> Perfect. Okay, great. I guess um, let's, let's get into the game itself. Um, the game is awesome. Um, I had zero expectations playing the demo. Um, the demo was extremely fun. So tell us uh, if there is any meaning behind the name Who Are You? Yeah, uh, the name Who Are You affects different sites, <clears throat> right? Because uh, you have 
different representations, right? You have Ray, that's the main character, right? That he's trying to understand what's real and what's not. And he's trying to understand who he is, actually. That's the first, who are you? Who are you as Ray, as the main character? Then you have the antagonist. That will be these people that, that are wearing different, uh, different alien masks and the ones that are trying to put Ray into different bad situations. That's the second, who are you? Who are you? Why are you doing this? Uh, tho all those questions together. And then you have the, the third question that will be for the player itself, right? Because you will be facing different situations. In the demo, you face just a small parts of what's going to happen. But once the, the full game is released, uh, the player will be facing different type of situations that will make them ask themselves, who are you? Who am I as a person, as a player? Um, why uh, am I doing this, right? So that's the whole idea behind the name itself. Yeah, I think that's very true to when you play the game because when I was playing the demo, I very much got the feeling of being confused of what is real, what's not real, uh, whether Maddie's real, whether Ray's real, whether Amy's real, whether it's the aliens. So I, I completely got that experience when I was playing the game, which was really cool. A lot of confusion, but good confusion, I guess. <laughs> There's a lot of work that goes into creating a game. How do you go about creating the main characters? So in terms of creating Ray, Amy, Maddie, how much work and how much of a backstory do each of those those characters have? Uh, well, we put a lot of effort on them because this is a psychological horror game, right? So that's why we have a pass here, right? Uh, first of all, we need to make sure that the psychology of each character is well-placed. That means that we need to have... Uh, Every character, even the, the bad ones, need to have a backstory, right? So you will see it only maybe 5 or 10% uh, during the demo. And even in the full game, you will see maybe 50 to 60% of what actually is being written, right? So we are writing the whole backstories back to their parents, back to their grandparents, to make sure why they are behaving like this, right? Why, uh, how was their childhood? Which are the different things? Uh, if you were Ray, what will, would you choose? Uh, which drink would you get? Would you get right? Which will be your favorite sport? All of those things needs to be placed together, and we have passed uh, to create uh, all the psychological aspects that depend, and those depends on those choices, right? So having the story and having the psychological part uh, be in place uh, as perfect as we can. And that is how the, the game will develop, right? That's crazy. I, I, I can't believe how much work that goes into it. It's, it's awesome. I guess, Paz, can you tell us a little bit about what exact research you do to develop the character story? And additionally to that, can you tell us which one is your favourite character and why? <laughs> I will say my favorite character is Ray because he's the main character. And for example, something that we we did was we created Ray's profile, for example, based on the different stories of people who have suffered depression and post-traumatic stress in order to create a deeper story. So all the game and all the characters has have a, a lot of background. Even the bad characters have have a backstory too. In in the demo, we we don't necessarily see who the bad guy is until I guess towards the end of the demo, the last scene. And I'm making the assumption that the bad guys are the aliens. Where again, the game leaves you confused because the bad guys might not, might not traditionally be the aliens. The bad guys might actually be Ray, Amy, or Maddie. But I guess um, what – is there anything you guys want to share about the bad guys in this specific story that may not necessarily be obvious? Because throughout the demo, I'm making the assumption that the aliens are the bad guys. Hmm, something that we can say right now. Hmm, let me think. There's a lot of things that are going to happen. Uh, as you say, 
you don't know what's real. Things are going to change as you pass the game, right? So let's say that for now, when you start the game, uh, that's part of the introduction. That's something that we can say that Amy, that's Ray's wife, uh, has been kidnapped 20 years ago. So what we can say is that they are involved, right? These people with the alien mask, we don't know if they are aliens or not. Even, even despite what you see on, on the end, on, on, on the end part of the demo, uh, don't stay with that thought, right? Things are going to change, and you will see a, a lot of different things that will happen. And there's a lot more than what's being said for now. So for, for, for now, what we can say is that uh, Amy's disappearance, that's Ray's wife, and that happened 20 years ago, that happened because of these people, right? And these people, they are coming, it seems like they are coming back to, to get Ray now. I'm, I'm excited. So essentially expect anything <laughs> moving forward. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm so curious to see what happens and why, why aliens? So they're, they're wearing alien masks. So I don't know if they're humans or if they're actually aliens, but what's the concept behind the aliens and the alien masks? Well, it's because um, there are not, uh, there were not a lot of games that were psychological horror games with that, with the, with the alien team. Right, uh, that's something that that we love. I mean, we love all the paranormal stuff. We have a lot of uh, things that we love uh, on those sides. Also, we love about the alien stories. But when we created the game, uh, this was for a game jam that happened back in February. That's a theme horror jam. And at that moment, I thought that why not? I mean, there were not many games at that moment. There were no games. No new games, even indie games, uh, that, that were cre created around that subject. Maybe one or two, uh, but not very popular at that specific moment. Um, so I thought, why don't we create something that's deep and it's not something that you can see every day, right? You can see a lot of game, uh, games about ghosts, but not about this specific story. So I thought, maybe th this will be the the best way to to create something that we we'll, would love to see that we'd love to play and to do the effort to create uh something that people that things like us that would like to see a game about these themes that would love to play too i completely get that and i think that's really cool and i personally love aliens and anything to space so <laughs> i think it's so cool um i guess i want to quickly go through every scene if we can uh to explain you a, a little bit about uh how and why these scenes are different first of all you are walking through ray's memories right so each situation that happens and that's why it happened in different parts right is because the idea is that you'll walk among uh, together with ray uh, or as ray as a character and as a player and experience different situations in his memory. So his memory and each, uh, each in each part is different, right? He experienced different situations, different feelings. Uh, there's going to be uh, flashbacks also that are going to introduce you to why things are happening in the different uh, scenes, right? So if you start with the first part, that will be the main introduction. That's why it's slower, because it will walk you through the, the story on why things are going to start happening, right? You hear about Amy, you understand who is Amy, why uh, things are going to happen, why you receive a box on, on, your, on your doorway. Um, all those things are just to put you in the mood, right? That's why you, you will be hearing Ray's voice, the voice acting, it's great. I mean, the people who made the, the voice acting for each character are fantastic. And they put a lot of soul in what they did. So uh, that's why the first part, you practically hear Ray's voice, right? So you get connected with him. You connect with his feeling, uh, what he felt when he lost his wife, uh, what happened uh, between these 20 years that happened, right? 
understand a little bit of, about Mary, and that's how the the whole first scene happens. Right then, you will you will hear Amy, and that's when you start hearing Amy, his wife. It's when the game actually starts. That will make you go to the next scene. That will be the second. Before we we get to the next scene, I think there are a couple things that I really liked in the first scene. I really liked how I would duplicate Amy's throughout the house, specifically when she goes downstairs and she's dancing. <laughs> it made me laugh, actually. Uh, so what's the meaning of having uh, duplicate Amy's throughout throughout the house in the cabin scene? Well, it's part of uh, getting to know Amy, right? Like Amy had different moods. And uh, Ray experienced Amy in different ways, right? So you will see Amy through Ray's eyes. That's how he saw her. Uh, sometimes angry, sometimes happy, um, sometimes being playful, like dancing, when dancing, for example. So that's the whole idea behind it. It's cool that she, when you walk up to her, she vanishes too. So it provides the illusion that, yeah, she's gone. She's not really there, which is, which is really cool. I also really like the fact that in the cabin, um, when you walk to the windows, you could see out the windows. You could see the um, the trees or I guess the external parts of the roof of the house, which I guess adds that extra layer of um, creativeness within the game. But also when you walk downstairs, you start to see the alien men through the windows. So I'm... I'm assuming that that's not random. So what, what is the purpose to, um, to be able to see the, the alien men through the window? Well, it's the whole idea that you are being watched all the time, right? Even though you are walking through race memories, right? They are watching you. We don't know who they are, but they are there. In every step that you take, you will see, you will see that they and you will feel them. Yes, you do. It definitely sets the tone and sets the mood for, for what's about to happen, which um, I completely appreciate it. It's great. So the the next scene, I guess the next big scene really is the crop scene. Um, finding the toys, you, you, you have to find five toys, specific toys, creepy toys. <laughs> Could you tell us, um, I guess, the meaning behind, behind the toys? So from memory, there was the alien keychain, there was the rocket ship, there was the doll, there was the Argentina, Argentina football player, and there was one more, the spaceship, the saucer, the UFO. Yeah, so is there any meaning behind the toys? Yeah, well, um, Mari, that's Ray's and Amy's daughter, was raised in an environment where Amy loved everything that uh, had to do with aliens, the space. Um, before she disappeared, she tried to transmit this to Mari. So she bought these toys for her. Right, and so Mari grew up just playing and loving these toys, right? Um, that's why she had the, the keychain, she has the UFO or the rocket ship. She always played with those uh, when she was little. So the idea behind those toys is having that connection that you as Ray as a father and as the husband to Amy, you have to understand and, and to know which uh, is the actual connection that you needed to have with your daughter, right? That's why it's like that part of the memory, for example, while you you recollect those toys, Amy at, that, at this specific moment is like 25 years old, but when she was playing with these uh, toys, uh, she had between five to seven years. So it's that reconnection uh, with the past and with what's happening, there's going to be something that's going to happen that's not there yet, but there's going to be some flashback that will explain this. But it's that, it's that connection with your daughter, right? If you want to, to show that you actually care for your family, that you are actually interested, you have to connect to collect these toys and to make sure, uh, and you'll see that these toys also have a connection with the alien theme and, and all of that. And of course, the, the Argentinian soccer players, because ju it's just a, a little Easter egg for, for us as an Argentinian studio too. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you guys won the World Cup, which is absolutely awesome. Like, yeah, you guys are the goats, which is awesome. Um, I also noticed that the toys, they're in every scene. They're in the cabin. 
when you walk through the cabin scene in the different bedrooms, the, the toys are spread across the house. I, I don't know if I was able to find all of them, but I found the doll, I found the rocket ship. They're in the crop scene. And then if we fast forward all the way, all the way to the last scene as well, they're, they're in that last scene where, I don't know what the last scene is, like some medical center or something? It's going to be a, a lab. It's going to be more than that in the end, but let, let's say it's a lab for now. Nice. Okay, before we go to the lab scene, um, the May scene. So I was, I remember chatting to you offline, Diego, because I couldn't pass that scene. <laughs> It's hard. But it's because, hard. well, it, it's because I, I, I'm not good at playing games. But I remember you saying that there's no specific map. The the way that I guess you find the, uh, you, you're able to get to the next scene is when you start seeing more aliens come out of the, the grass walls. So I'm curious, just from like a game design perspective, why why did you guys not, create a specific map or a specific road path for that scene? Why do you let the the, the player aimlessly run there for hours? <laughs> it took me 20 minutes. It took me 20 minutes to finish the maze. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. It took me so long. Yeah, it's more like um, you see that there's even the, the way you see the game on that part, it changes, right? So the camera changes. Uh, it's uh, more the, road, the and... map. The map changes too. Like it's different every single time. I think, or it can be. Is it? Is that correct? It's not. It's not every. It's not different. It's always. So the maybe same. it's me. But no. Uh, some people experience that as well. That's the idea. That's the idea yeah. behind the sound, behind the, the music itself, and behind the uh, the way you see the game, right? Because. Before that, it's always the same camera, it's always the same experience, just for a little part on the cabin. But when you get into the maze, uh, your visual and the, your view is different, right? So you view things in a different way. So that's uh, the main idea, because you're approaching the end. So you're feeling dizzy, right, as a person. You're experiencing different uh, feelings because of what happened before, right? So when you get to that part, you're lost, right? You're tired, you know? you're frustrated, you're confused. I felt all of those emotions. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. And, and, that, and that's, uh, that's the idea. And the only thing that you see familiar there will be the, these people with the alien mask, right? So the idea behind that is like uh, playing with or trying to see how players react to that experience, to that situation, if they feel they should follow those people or be afraid of them, right? Are th are they the key or not? That's more or less what's behind the maze. And the fact that we don't know if they're good or bad is, is, is yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> it's exciting. Um, I want to go back just quickly to the crop scene. Um, I noticed that uh, what I particularly liked about the crop scene was um, you had a, a light tower, I think it was a light tower, with a random alien man on the light tower, which I thought was a really, it was really cool, it was really creative. I, I just want to understand as a team how you come about those ideas. Are you seriously sitting there as a team seeing who can come up with the craziest idea or with the scary idea or are you finding inspiration from other horror games or other horror movies? So um, I don't know if that's probably your, more, your domain, Paz, or whether you want to chat about that, Diego. I think it's a, a bit of both uh, in that case, because uh, what happens here is that, of course, we always, we are like brainstorming all day long, right? <laughs> maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe Paz is walking down the street and she sees like, um, <laughs> I, I don't know, a well, and she sends a picture and says, let's, let's do something with this. Or I do that like all that, the right? time. <laughs> <laughs> that so do you guys literally have like a chat group and you're continuously talking in the chat group yeah, we, with we creating have ideas a chat group. 
Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, we do that, that all the time, and we have Wally. That's Walter. That uh, he's uh, the one who creates the characters, and he helps with the writing. He's also he's also the, the sound producer, and he also has big ideas all the time. We both come from the the movies. Uh, kind of, of life so uh, we actually got together because we thought we were going to create like a short film but instead we're doing the game <laughs> um, so we're, we're always uh, chatting even sometimes we we have our private chat and he sends some idea and then I say well let's bring this to the team so then we go to to the team chat and we say we can do this then passes all right we can let's try to think this in a more psychological way which would be the best way to to place this Right, and from all of that, we let we say, okay, we have all of these ideas. Let's combine. This is something that can create the mood for the for the player, right? And that's how an alien, uh, an alien form in <laughs> up there watching you as you gather the toys uh, is created. Who came up with the idea? Uh, I was. Uh, it was me on first, but after gathering uh, all the ideas uh, from Paz, because Paz was uh, bringing this idea, and if you want to talk about it, Paz, about being watched, right? Like, in a psychological, uh, she, she will be better to explain that part. I don't know if you want to go ahead and, and say something about it, but uh, that, that experience of being watched, it, it was the main idea behind that. Mari. Mm -hmm. Really, really big questions. I, I freaked out and I chose the question mark door, the, the door in the middle. I'm curious, Paz and Diego, what door would you choose? What door did you choose? Because I freaked out and chose the middle door. <laughs> I will choose to save the humanity for sure. You're a good person, Paz. I, I freaked out. <laughs> what about yourself, Diego? No, I'm just the opposite. I'm always the opposite as past. Yeah. Oh, really? But yeah, I, 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 I will. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I would say I would say Mari for sure. Nice. Okay, I love that. And again, in that final scene, um, again, the toys are in the scene. They're in. They're huge, blown up versions of the toys. So I feel as though that's a really classy touch as well. You've you've carried consistent themes and consistent objects throughout the scene, which is really really cool. And they're freaky, like having like this large rocket ship or a large like doll creature in yeah, just standing there as well. So that's really cool. Um, a couple of questions just behind the team. So how do you guys all know each other? Uh, and how did you decide to, to work with each other, essentially? I met Walter. Uh, we actually met as a, in a game designer um, kind of course, like a s small course, like some weeks, right? Um, we both had a big love for horror, like big, big love for horror. Uh, horror. I'm a writer. He's a writer too. He's a sound producer. He knew I'd studied to become a, a filmmaker. I'm also. I used to be an actor, a theater actor. So I'm. Yeah, I, I'm all over the place. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so uh, knowing all of that, he he reached me and he wanted to to create this uh, short film that he was thinking about. He also wrote, wrote a book uh, as well. He's writing a novel actually. So there's a lot of artistic. Uh, things <laughs> among each other right so i said okay le instead of doing a short film we are doing this a uh, game designer curse right so let's create a game and that's how we wanted to start right then we uh, asked 
people in the in that same place if someone wanted to join us uh that's where uh, malu she is the the 3d artist she said i, I want to join the team we said all right <laughs> let's do it um and that's how we started initially, right? We had no developer. We met some developers around the way. That's why that's why we were not able to actually create or or create the, an actual game, right? Until who are you? Because we had the ideas. We were creating. I, I mean, Walter is a great character artist, and Malu is a great 3D artist. So we have the scene. I mean, we have the, the characters. We know how these scenes will go, but we didn't have a person who could actually develop for the team right at that moment and of course we wanted to create a psychological horror experience we always thought about creating psychological horror because we want to make sure that the players and everyone who sees the game even in a stream or playing the game uh, feels what we are trying to, to to provide to them right because how important games were for us we want to create something unique an ex experience that it's so unique that they feel the same way that they they feel that this is something even if they are scared that they cannot play because they are so much uh, scared that this is something that will take them away from their regular life and they can just get involved in the story and the character as well right and well mm -hmm. and that was for the just the three of us we tried getting people to to, to understand how we feel, but we wanted to make sure that we all had the same ideas and we went uh, on the same path. That's where the developer came. That's a good friend of mine who wanted to learn about gaming. So I said to him, all right, let's learn Unreal. Let's create a game uh, from zero and let's uh, start with that. And that's how Who Are You started, right? Back in February. That's when we started learning and we created the game for this jam. And on April, I think, I met Paz on another course. We were like trying to, to find a, psycholo a psychologist advisor for the team, but we didn't know where to start, right? So uh, Paz just came out of nowhere, like falling from heaven for us. And it was fate, right? Like she had to be with the team. And uh, happily, she accepted. So <laughs> <laughs> that's how we... So good. I love that. It sounds as though you all are extremely passionate about it and you're enjoying the whole process. I'm, I'm curious to understand how much time you guys spend outside of work on the game. Mm, I will say outside of the work, you, you work on the game all, all day because you are always thinking uh, doing some research, um, looking for inspiration and things like that. You're always working and always uh, talking with the team. So I will say all the day, <laughs> even in the work, in my case. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. I, I, I respect that. What about yourself, Diego? Yeah, more or less the same as she said, yeah. right? Um, this, even, sometimes maybe you even dream about <laughs> the game itself, right? Because of all the things that you have to do and, and all of that. But but yeah, we are trying to do it in, in a safe uh, way, right? We don't mm -hmm. try not to stress yeah. with the game itself, but we are always uh, passionate about it, right? So mm -hmm. even if we say, all right, let's rest for two days, <laughs> not thinking about the game, we end up thinking about the game and maybe it's impossible yeah, yeah. create something right <laughs> but but it's, it's all about the, the passion right you have to do this if you're really passionate you don't have to press yourself at all i mean that's my my point of view right and that's why i try to, to transmit to everyone in the team um don't pressure yourself do things if you want to do this if you want to experience things do it but if you need rest speak up if you need some time to just uh, clean your mind and start uh, thinking about other things or taking care of other things uh, do it but I think uh, more or less we all uh, share the same vision right so we end up doing stuff all the time basically
It's very wise advice. It sounds as though you all enjoy it, but you're not you're you're not letting it completely consume you guys, which is which is really very wise from for you guys. Can I ask, are any of you getting paid or is this all just a passion for you guys at the moment? Just all passion and heart. Nice. Even for the voice for, for the voice actors. Yeah. They love the game. They are streamers who love the game and wanted to, to be part of the game. That's so, so cool. Uh, so everyone is just involved uh, with just hard work and, and love. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. And I guess I want to know when your end date is or the release date and whether you guys think you will finish the game by that date. Hopefully it will be by the end of next year because we're still missing only um, three levels. So the demo that you play in a way has three levels divided in five parts. Some of those levels are going to be part of these uh, three levels that are missing. Um, but that's the the main vision that we have that's going to happen uh, by end of, end of next year. Um, but we are trying to provide the best quality that we can give to the game itself. So we are. Uh, so if that goes uh, farther than that, we'll just uh, regroup and, and and realize that we need more time. But ideally, if things go well, yeah, it's going to be by by the end of next year. Hopeful for you guys. Hopefully, you get it done so everyone can ex play and experience the the great game, which is very exciting. Diego, you mentioned that you have a background in filmmaking. I'm, I'm curious to understand whether you find making a film more difficult or making a video game more difficult. It's a bit of both, actually. Um, I don't think you can measure uh, both things because this is all about creativity, right? So more or less you do the same steps to create a game than to create a movie, right? Or to create a short film. Uh, maybe one of the things that sometimes may be difficult is when you work with a voice actor, you have to be uh, create things really well, right? The script has to be very um, precise, so the voice actor knows how to use their voice. It's different when you have to work with a real actor, or me as well as being an actor, uh, trying to, to understand a script. If you have the director, the director can say, okay, move like this, do this. But we are doing this like um, in a remote way, right? So the voice actor needs to see the script. And maybe when he does the voice acting, sometimes maybe our time zones are different. Maybe I'm sleeping so I can tell him or her, okay, uh, do it this way. So it takes a lot of uh, trial and error to make sure we, we provide that experience that we want, that maybe on when when you're trying to create a short film or a film, um, you have the, the possibility to work face to face, right? But despite that, I think more or less is, is the same amount of effort, it's the same amount of difficult things that you have to face just in different ways, right? Yeah, I completely appreciate that. And I, I feel as though both will be hard work, equally rewarding. When you when you have a good finished project, which is which is really cool. Uh, so you are a horror lover. <laughs> so have you got any uh, recommendation for good horror movies for the viewers to go and check out? One or two recommendations, or and why you love why you like those recommendations? Sure. One of the I will always recommend. Asian films because they are psychological horror per se. So one of those films will be Cairo, that's from Japan. Uh, there's also a ver an American version named uh, Pulse, but watch Cairo. Cairo is the, the original one and it has all the feeling. Maybe you won't see like a lot of jump scares or things like that, but you will go through the anxiety because this film, um, it's specifically about the feeling of loneliness right the feeling of sadness uh, when you feel lonely when you feel helpless and all of that's happening in the movie happens through internet because it was there when internet more or less started was around 2000 i think 
uh, if I'm not wrong. Um, so it goes around that idea that how scary or how things can go wrong when you feel lonely, when you feel all that sadness, and uh, and it's very deep, right? If you follow the story, it's really deep. Um, and then m more on the slasher kind of way, you will have Hot Tension, that's a French movie, um, that's uh, bloody, more or less, because it happens on, on a farm out of nowhere, and there's this uh, bad situation happening to this family, and they need to escape, but it's uh, the tension and um, the way French movies work on horror, it's like aiming to be high impact horror, right? So uh, you're going to feel uh, all the tension, all the movie, uh, and you have those both. If you want something a little bit calmer or uh, more psychological, move to, to the Asian films or to the this Cairo Japanese one. If you want high impact, blood and all of that, watch Hot Tension. Perfect. I, I love that. And um, I'm curious, do you have a Argentinian recommendation? <laughs> yeah, uh, there's actually one movie that just came out that's called When Evil Lurks. When Evil Lurks um, happened to be this year like one of the biggest horror movies uh, worldwide. Uh, it's being said that's one of the biggest horror movies right now. Um, and I watched it the other day and it's fantastic. Um, so I highly recommend you to watch When Evil Lurks because it's, it's awesome. What is your favorite horror video game? Well, I can say it's Silent Hill Shattered Memories because that involves, a, yeah, yeah, that involves a, a, a psychologist and it's, it's Silent Hill, right? And I think that that's uh, the main one for me. Have you got any advice for anyone wanting to make a video game? Yeah, in, in my case, I will say have a lot of patience because it's a <laughs> so long, hard work. It's insane. It's insane. Uh, so I will say that. Are you a patient person? Uh, uh, no, <laughs> but I try. That's why I, get, I get, that's why I get so frustrated with video games. I think a lot of good uh, video game players or a lot of gamers are patient and I'm not patient. I, I, I crack it. Anyway, what about yourself, Diego? Any advice for anyone wanting to start a video game? Uh, yeah, follow your passion. Don't Aww. think that it, it's going to be difficult. Things are difficult anyway. Life is difficult, but you have always to be to start and to do things in, in a positive manner, right? So don't stop. Don't stop. Even if you think the world is too big, try to jump it. That's the main thing. Oh, I love that. Very inspirational. Guys, I absolutely love the demo. I'm, I'm so excited for, for the game to be released. I hope it is released on time so we can all play it. And I think, um, personally, I think uh, horror is a really difficult genre. A lot of people get it wrong or it's really easy to make it cheesy and corny. I think you guys have made it really classy. Um, I like how moody the game is. I like how there's not many jump scares throughout the game. Um, it sounds as though there's a lot of work and strategy behind the game. And I think it's you can see that when you play the game. So um, I think you've done a great job so far and I'm so excited for you guys to um, finish the game and we can we can play the game <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much